So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are joined officially by Steelers 2014 six round draft pick, 192 overall selection out of UCLA, and more importantly, one of my former freaking teammates, Jordan Zonewalt, baby. My dog. What's happening? My hey, dog. I, I feel like I'm going to be walking out with a belt right now. Hey, look, you know man. I mean? look, That's an intro right there, listen, brother. Listen, bro. Listen. You already know for the time we linked in 14, it was love. And every time we done kicked it up and it, it's been love, man. It's so been love, definitely bro. appreciate you being with me, man. Got my homie Deacon here, man, tapping in with us as well. What's the word, bro? Deacon, what's happening? How are you? I'm good, man. How you feel about Kenny Pickett? Good. Good, good, good. Okay, good. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> he said, how you feel about Kenny? <laughs> That's his man's in them. That's his man's. But um, I want to start, you know. A little old school with you, man. Taking it back from the beginning of the time, your high school yeah. time. And then we're going to work our way through this thing, all right? Because, but, you know, as I was, you know, researching you, the California kid, the Edison High School prospect, the Huntington Beach mm -hmm. superstar. Man, talk a little bit about what that California football life was like for you, man. Is it yeah, like what we see on TV, man? Because they make it look uh, <laughs> you, you know how y'all are on TV, bro. Hey, in SoCal, at least man. where I grew up, yes. Uh, bro, we went to the beach we get double workouts. We go to the beach every day. Bruh. Like we, we go, we go, we get double school, go to workouts, go to the beach. In the summertime, we get double workouts, go to the beach. Bruh. It was like, you know, we basically lived down at the beach, man. It was, uh, it was a good time, bro. It was, uh, we were a tight knit group. You know, sometimes, you know, I think in high school, the big, the big thing about high school is, man, it's like your team is a team you're, you're forced to be with. Like, yeah. There is no recruiting. There is no nothing. It's like just a genuine feeling of brotherhood because it's like, there is nobody else. Oh, this is the pure stage. You, know? you already know that. It's the purest, purest stage of football, bro. And I think that that goes really under, you know, underestimated or really missed where high school football is just genuine football, man. And that was some of the best times. Bro, but not just high school football. I'm like, bro, your school specifically, y'all got dudes that come out of there too, man. <laughs> hey, hey, we were balling, bro. We went, uh, we went all the way, man. We were undefeated. We were kicking. I mean, we this was, a, you know, we're public school. We were kicking all the private school yeah. butts. Man, this was back when everybody had their glory days between the modern days, the servites and all that. But Bruh. but we ended up we ended up going to the CIF championship and um you know, we're a, a big time passing team. Yeah. And uh I mean it couldn't have rained any harder. It was just like it was like God was like, you know what, today's not your day, guys. Oh. We're we're gonna dump. So it just it poured rain, we had injuries. I mean, I'm not making excuses, it was still a close game. Yeah. But you know your boy had like 24 tackles. Hey, there, listen, so. listen, listen, bro. Every time I pull up your stats, I'm like, bro, wh what are you out there? Like, you're killing folk, bro. It was stupid. It was stupid. <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all this team, all, all state that, all American. Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Hey, I was balling now. You know, the Southern California Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. Stuff, Orange County Player of the Year. Man, I had recruiting and stuff was crazy. I don't know how that is with the new NIL stuff. I'm sure they, they bring out private jets for players nowadays. But What, what was recruiting like for you during that time? Because like we said, man, in California, California, like Texas, like Florida, those are massive states. You know what I mean? So massive when states, you're talking yeah. about being a top dude in those states, it just it's a lot different than some of these yeah. other smaller states, man. So what was that like for you, man, from a recruitment standpoint? Recruitment standpoint, man, it was it was cool. It was uh, you know, I was I went and did a unofficial to Stanford, was committed to Stanford for a long time. And then uh Stanford. you know, throughout the whole recruiting huh. Yeah, bro, Stanford. I, well my, my parents love the concept of the education, man. It's I mean, it's it's hard to compete. That's like the smart smart guy school. Smart, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, I, you know me, I had like a three point two and I was like I, 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 Shit, I can get a Stanford degree with this. I know you're smart. You already know I know you're smart. I know my dog's smart. I'm just like, bro. <laughs> I wasn't that smart, man. Bro, God. Hey. But I ended up going I ended up going to UCLA, obviously. But um, you know, I shoot, man. It came down to the last day. I called Harbaugh. I was like, man, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I can't do it. And to this day, I, I know that there's a little bit of beef. You man, we, we, down we Harbaugh? A, yeah, bro. Fuck. Hey, I got a story Ooh. for you. I uh, had to go meet the dean of admissions. I don't know how this all is, is uh -huh. with NIL stuff, so I don't want to get anybody in any trouble. This is a kid's well, – this is one of the best stories just as a kid, man. I, I had to go – put on my official visit out to Stanford and – I had to, uh, you know, went out there and my flip flops, my freaking high to beach outfit, you so know. So Cali, I love it. And, <laughs> so Cali. <laughs> and, uh, 
and the freaking uh, I had a, like, you know, how about the back of a, a go or of a golf cart? He goes, Hey, you ready? You got a suit? I'm like, I have a suit? <laughs> no. He's like, you got to go meet the dean of admissions and get accepted. Oh, I'm like, my well, nobody told me that, you know. So I'm like, okay. He's like, all right, come with me, come with me. So we hop in his golf cart. We go back to his locker room, bro. We get in the locker room. And he's like, all right, get get undressed. I'm like, okay, <laughs> bro. He's Harbaugh, He's wearing a suit. I'm wearing my freaking flip flops, freaking van shirt. I know he ain't switching swap, with you. We swap clothes, bro. We swap hey, clothes. Say, let's go. I put on <laughs> Coach Harbaugh's suit to go get accepted to the dean of admissions. Let's ride. Wow. And it was just a fun, like, it, and I can only imagine how pissed he was when I decommitted, man. But yeah, yeah, that's I can one see of that. My, my man's probably like, bro, I done took off the clothes of my back. He, I, I <laughs> clothes off his back, bro, and I Yo. dogged him. I. And I tell you what, I lost to him five times in four years. So Sheesh. I lost to Stanford right. five times in four years, bro. So, you know, I, I had the, the best. It was one of the best decisions I ever made, obviously. Yeah. So it was incredible, man. I got to go to school with my brother, my cousins, uh, the friendships I made. And, you know, the way things went was the best decision ever. But that's just that's a funny one I wanted bro, to tell. Bro, that's funny. I had no clue about that, man. That's yeah, I can see him feel I could <laughs> definitely crazy, see him bro. feeling some type of way. When you said it yeah. on the front end, I can see that now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, SC, yeah. SC had, uh, I turned out SC a bunch of times, and all of a sudden, man, they gave me a call. They're like, hey, there's a limo outside of your car. You got, or outside of your house, you got to get in it. I'm like, what? You, uh, okay. Like, uh, Mom, do I go? <laughs> Yo. You know? See, that's, that's that big time recruit life right there, man. That, that's. That's dope. Yeah, it That's was dope, cool, man. So yeah, you, it was cool, man. But what was it specifically about UCLA, though, man? That you know, you was like, you know what, man? Harbaugh is man, cool. Hey, we ended up is cool. All these other places are yeah. cool. But man, this I just I gotta do this right here, man. I tell you what, man. Um, they had we had the best recruiting class in like all of California. Or, I mean, the top like four, I think, in the country. Like we had a bunch of freaking ballers. Yeah, they came and joined up. We all kind of connected and decided let's do this thing. Um, I mean, it's close to home. It's UCLA. One of the former quarterbacks that was at my high school went to UCLA. It's just kind of like always looked at them like that was big time, you know. And I knew SC was on their way out, and they were the they were the team to beat at that time. So I was like, I want to beat the team Ooh, okay. that's the team to beat. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm not like a join up on the bandwagon type. I'm on the I'm on the bandwagon to go beat the bandwagon. Hey, you know respect I mean? respect on that. No, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of how it happened, man. No, I like that, man. Now, shoot, doing your time there, obviously you was killing folk, balling out. But hey, I want to fast know, forward. You know. I, I got to talk to you about this 2013 Sun Bowl, man. <laughs> you, you you know that's specifically the one I need to ask you about. Mm -hmm. Mr. 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 Co-MVP, 42 to 12. Because I don't like Virginia Tech. You know, as a James Madison guy, we, we feel like we the best school in all of Virginia. Virginia Tech, mm. they think they're mm. better than us. So you, it's always smoke over there, all right? Yeah. So so yeah. I want right. to specifically hear you talk about that whooping that you put on them. And what, hey, was, like, like, what was going on with you that day, bro? Because you, you, you man, were crazy I out there now. I yeah. don't know, man. It was uh, – I was, so here, I got to play Mike Backer. See, I, I personally, I'm a Mike Backer, you know. Okay, but, uh, okay. You know, I, so I was playing outside Backer a lot, a lot of Jack, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, Will. And uh, I don't know, that game, it just clicked for me. I was in the zone. And uh, it took about, you know, midway, about halfway through the first quarter. And then all of a sudden, it was just like, I don't know, man. It was just, you know, when you hit that zone and everything is the way it's supposed to be. Heck yeah. You know, and it's, it's hard to explain. That's kind of what happened during that game, man. It was like just, I was exactly where I was supposed to be every single time I was supposed to be there. Nah, bro. You know? That was fire, man. Like you said, man, when bro. I'm looking at the day going stats, I'm like, yo, you were killing folks out bro, there. Bro, I teed off. Yeah. I got to a point where they were like, hey, man, can you chill? <laughs> <laughs> Their team was like, hey, you got to, can you, can you just chill out? Man? It's like, the game's over. I'm like, fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that specific roster, too, that specific 2013 uh, team that you had, bro, you realize yeah. 19 of y'all from that 2013 roster made it to the National Football League. Yeah, man. We're talking you know, and Brett Hundley, we had a, Paul I told you, Perkins, bro, we had a squad. Anthony Barr, Shaquille Evans, Jordan Payton, Thomas Darte, uh, Kair Farbar. I hope I said his yeah, last Kai name right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kaimi. Miles Ma Jack, obviously yourself, Javon yeah. Brown, Eric Kendricks, Aaron Wallace, Eddie Vanderos. Deke's favorite outside linebacker, Cassius Marsh. Oh, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, Eli trust, and man. Co, Kenneth Clark, and Kyle. Uh, oh, hold on. I, come on. Come on. Got Kyle Fitz, Fabian, yep. Morrow, and Alex Redman. God, dog, bro. What was we that had, all we like, had man? A, we had a squad, man. We had a super squad. It was, um, you know, I. It was. it's funny that you say all that, man. We all always thought, like, how are we not winning all these damn games? Yeah. You know? I don't. I don't know. It was just we had we had a bunch of ballers. That's for damn sure. You know, it was uh, uh you know, the Pac-12 is a dog eat dog world, man. For no, some thanks. reason, it's just it's just so many different styles of play. It's not like power football. It's not spread. It's fucking freaking. You know, the, the spread of Oregon, and the very next day you got to go play against freaking Stanford. That'll Stanford going with twenty one personnel, throat. twelve person. Exactly, bro. So it's like there's no like it, it, the, you, if you if you have the team to beat the speed, you don't have the team to beat the power. You got yeah. the team to beat the power. You know what I mean? So it's just you gotta it, you face every single type of offense and defense out there. So the Pac Pac twelve, you know, they split it up, of course, but. Uh, back then, you know, there was it was just a dog eat dog world, man. And man, sh- I, you know, if God will, if I didn't get hurt, I'd like to think I'd still be playing. You know, no respect on that, bro. Crazy thing is, you got hurt right out the it gate. Is. It seemed like, man, it is. It is what it is. You know man. how it is, man. That's that's the world we yeah. live in, baby. That's the world we live in. Now, yeah, what do you think yeah. of UCLA's moves to the Big Ten? You have any takes on that? Um, go go get it. <laughs> go get it. Now we better get all the now I need you know we better get all the California recruits. It's gonna be a matter. It's it's gonna turn into basically like California versus uh, all the Midwest and Southern schools. You know what I mean? So it's like now it's gonna be all those California high end recruits. If you want to go play in the Big Ten, you're gonna have to either join up with SC or UCLA. So now it's gonna be a battle of the California recruits. I think. Now, do you think UCLA still gonna be able to dominate that vein versus like a USC? Um, I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna find out. You know, I don't, right, I don't think right. that, I, I don't think, I don't think, uh, we're definitely not going to show up there and go belly up. That's for sure. No, respect it. I like the you know, we got a, we got a new head coach. Yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah. Deshaun, Coach Foster. Bro, Let's he's, go. he's, a, he's the man. He's the man. He was, uh, he was always just like, he was a player's coach, but he was about the business, man. No, respect. He, he stood for his guys, bro. I remember there was one time in a uh, camp or something. There was, I had to go against a little guy. We were at camp and it's like 130 degrees. Over in San Bernardino, I don't know why we did that, but we did. And uh, one of those little guys came running off the edge, and I just freaking pummeled him. And uh, during one on ones, and he came up and got all up in my face, like, "Zom, what the, what's wrong with you?" You know, I'm like, "Coach, why'd you put him out there?" Just you know, kill, just go get, beating up on got, all these people. That's, that's why you California, though. That's why you missed the California. I already told you, bro. Mister yeah, California, he's got all his guys, bro. Like he, he just stands by his guys. Now, if his whole team is his guys. Coach Foster's the man, bro. I, yeah. I, would, I would play for him any second. No, I like that then. All right, all right. And then, like I said, y'all did also add Eric Bieniemy to the staff as well. OC out there now, man. Who? Uh, Eric Bieniemy. He did go to uh, UCLA, right? I'm not tripping. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I haven't caught up. Okay, okay. Yeah, I about to say, yeah, man. He just he just got hired out there also, man. So that's going to be a dope, dope pickup for you guys as well. But um, Awesome. You know, I'm just fresh back from the combine. That's Actually, where me and you was, you know, you called me up, we had a chance to talk and yep. stuff like that. But um, I did actually want to spin the block for you a little bit, man, because of your UCLA time. You were one of the guys to get that invite to the combine. Yeah. You know, we obviously, man, everybody shares their unique experiences at the combine. If you could, though, for yourself, man, just talk. What was your experience like, man? We obviously know it's Straight a massive the combine. thing, man. It's TV man. everywhere. But talk about what it was like for you, man. Man, the thing they don't tell you at the combine is you really don't get any rest. <laughs> and it's it's it goes and it goes and it goes like it's just like you think like that you, you, you we just go out and do these these things that only, is only seen on tv but it's like from wake up to you go to bed man you're you're meeting new people every single every day and is you got to be on you're you're being like um like all eyes on you every second of every day anything you say is going to be noted anything you tell anybody is going to be noted you know, so you gotta be, you gotta be on your P's and Q's. You gotta dot your, dot your I's across your T's. You know, we gotta make sure that everything you, the way you want to be projected is the way you're projecting yourself. Now, were you? I remember. Oh, go ahead. My bad. I, I sat didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. I sat down. Uh, we were just going from room to room, meeting with the teams. I remember seeing Johnny Menzel sitting there. 
You're in Manziel's See, class. I was in Manziel's class. See, I had Tebow. So let me let me hear your man. Oh, what was that? Yeah. You know what it's like with no, one of them I, there. Yeah. I felt bad, bro. Like I didn't know. Like nobody knew the whole story of him, you know, and everything that's coming out yeah. and, as we're learning all this stuff. I remember I sat down next to him, just like he just looked. He just looked down, man. He looked down. I sat down mm-hmm. next to him, like I never seen man. That don't look down, you know. Like that's yeah, just Johnny Manziel. Johnny football, bro. What are you, what are you bro, looking, what are you looking down for? <laughs> Now that all this stuff has come out, it makes sense, bro. But I remember just sitting down next to him, like, what's up, man? You know? And I don't know. We just kind of looked at each other. He's just like, man, I'm just, it's all good, bro. I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll catch you later. You know? Like, I didn't, I, he seemed like he was in his Yo. own little moment. You know? I remember that one. Day going, man. Day going. But yeah, now, I mean, you're hearing all this between his Netflix and sit down stuff. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're like, damn, yeah, you, 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 you really were going out. through it. You were. You <laughs> really my man needed a cigarette over there, bro. Just, yeah. Just, just pull oh, on one, man. man. <laughs> yeah. I should have hit Shit. I should have just gave you a hug, bro. It's going to be all right. God. Something. Damn. Now, but yeah, yeah it's a combine, bro. Combine gets intense. You have any thoughts on uh, some of these opt outs that have been coming becoming more frequent over the last few years? Opt outs? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, like you can opt out yeah, of the just yeah, players yeah, yeah. not really nothing. participating. Uh, I don't even know that was a thing. Yeah, bro. Like Caleb Williams this year, man. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Is it, Jr., is, some is of the it affecting dudes. people's stock? You said what now? Is it affecting their stock? So. That's the question it's in just, terms of it's just making the combine less eventful these days, yeah. basically, like well, not not meaning as much. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't. I mean, man, there's so much change since since our time, bro. I mean, yeah. the fact that like you could just jump ship now and go to another school the day of. Because I don't even think like, Marvin Harrison Jr. is doing his pro day either. Yeah, he's just like I'm standing on. He's the top literally receiver. Feel he's just like, like, I don't need to do it. He's probably well, right. He I doesn't need to do it. I guess we'll find out if it if it affects his stock. Like what what we're learning and what what we yeah. realize that the uh, NIL has done is it giving all these athletes the, the freedom to like look, you're you're not tied up to the system. Yeah. If you think this is the best way to do it, then then do it your way. You know, and I think we'll see how that how that plays out. We've seen how it played out. Um, you know, when, when we were all held accountable and, and held up to these certain yeah. certain rules, you know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't always easy, not always, but, you know, not everybody rose, was able to rise at the top, but maybe this will give other players that ability, you know? No, nah, because that's definitely kind of how I, I look at it too, bro. Like, the power that they have, man, it's, it's good to see, but at the same time, yeah. like, how is it going to affect everything going forward? What are the ripple effects that are going to come off of this day? Ex- exactly. And I think, I think that's still part of the experiment right now. We'll see how that kind of starts to play out. I mean, it's only been a couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still know? very new, man. It's still brand new. So I think we'll see if somebody opts out. Well, I think that opens up another spot for somebody else who was dying for it. Shoot. You remember the homie TG? Uh, that's what he actually proposed. He was saying, you know, yeah. if dudes are going to opt out and not work out, man, get that to somebody that will come out there and work out. Exactly. You know how exactly, I, mean, I look man. at you, you man. Know I know you cut it up there. out there. You know, I was out there trying to do everything. I'm like, yeah, we ain't got time to yeah. set out no drills. Uh-huh. No, no, we don't have uh-huh. time to set out drills, uh-huh. man. We got, it's like, I mean, I don't know what the luxury of being uh, the number one guy is. So, like, yeah, if I was the number one guy, maybe I would, I, maybe I'd opt out. I don't know, but it wasn't like that for for me and basically almost everybody else. So it's Same. like, yeah, everybody we, say, we everybody take every 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 second on that field we can get. Yo, but this ain't can't miss an opportunity, bro. Facts. Yeah, <laughs> facts, man. Uh, how much have you been paying attention to draft prospects this year? Cause I was gonna see oh, not, if, not much. Not man. much. I was gonna see if you had some target to or some prospect to watch out for, target for the Steelers, if you had any oh, kind of no. inside scoop. I, I, or I'm like too that. I'm too wrapped up in what I got going on, man. Oh yeah, and we about to get to that too, babe. We definitely about yeah, to get I'm to wrapped that. Up. Hey look, man, next time UCLA's gotta get another like big time version of you or Kendrick's or Ball or Jack and then we be talking about everybody know about it then. So heck you, yeah, man. You're damn right, bro. You're damn right. I'm gonna be texting you too. Hey you gotta check out this guy. Already. You know? Already. Hey, get, hey get him on the show. Get him on the show. No, big facts. Big facts, baby. Big facts. <laughs> no, I did though want to ask a little bit about your NFL draft story as well, man, because we know not everybody gets the privilege or the opportunity to even make it to the NFL, let alone get drafted. Man, take right. us right. through that moment for you real quick, man. Man, that well, that, that draft, like, I, I thought I was going to go higher than I did. So it is what it is. But um, it was a hell of an experience, man. It was it was uh, the whole training for the combine thing and 
And that's when I had met my wife. You know, I'm. Let's hey, go. Up, Shout out to love. Shout out to love in the building. Shout out to the love in the building. I'm over here training for the combine, baby. What's up? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, so we, uh, it was, it was a cool process, man. I, you know, I had, I had a big old party day one, day two, went over to watch my boys get drafted uh, on day one. And then, you know, I thought my day was coming day two and it didn't. So day three rolled, man. I was just, I had a bunch of family over. I went, I went and slept half the day. Like I was just like, I can't be around people. Like everybody asked me all these damn questions. Like, yeah. I, I literally am here for like a phone call, you know, like I don't have to, like, I, I, I love you guys, but just leave me alone right now, you know? Yo. And I ended up, I ended up getting my call, man. It, it, all of that was just gone. It was just fucking freaking, it was gone, man. It was just hooray, hurrah. Just couldn't be any more ecstatic. You know, I'm going to Pittsburgh. I fit in great in Pittsburgh. So I just, I couldn't have been more ecstatic about it, man. The way that I play in my, you know, the, uh, type of uh demeanor I, I play with you know or played no. with uh it fit in well i thought no respect on that baby absolutely absolutely right on man and now like we said man it was a shorter career man because of the injuries but did you have a favorite memory or any favorite just moment from your time man with the steelers favorite memory or favorite moment oh man i'd say it first time walking out on the field man i uh Every single time I, um, every time I, before pregame, I go out on the field, I, I go stand in the middle of the field and just kind of listen to some music and look around and yeah. just try to take a second to just absorb as much of the energy and everything around me as possible and just be in that moment, you know? Um, that was cool. No, nah, I love that, cool, that there, baby. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. And like I said, yeah. it was always good to see my dog out there. Like, yo, Zoomy, where you at, baby? You living? All right, Zoomy in the building. Yeah. Zoomy in the building. Kill something. All right, all right. One time for you the coach. Know, One man. time. Let's get it, you baby. No. Now, now we got to talk, though, baby. All right. Because all right, what you got? Si since football, you know, mm -hmm. you've been, you, you been getting active. All right. You've been putting this, yeah. this, this, Edison High School 3.2, this UCLA, you know, schooling. <laughs> you to put all of this to work, all of this to usage. Yeah, man. And you got been, something um, pretty cool going on, man. So if you could talk about Toast Targets, and specifically yeah, for those that targets. don't target, ToastTargets.com. Yeah. All right, check my yeah, homie out. Check but, it but, out. But talk about it. Please talk about it because it is actually pretty cool as I'm watching it, man. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, lot, whole lot of happened post-football. Post-football is a... You know, that's its own beast in its own right, man. There's a whole lot of uh, discovery and stuff you got to do for all the guys out there that end up going through it, yeah. man. Just go through it. Got to find yourself. It's, really it's a process. It's a process. Just, go through it. just don't forget, you're always a football player. You will always be a football player. Now you're a football is. player doing something else. There it is. There it you is. You know what I mean? You're a football player doing something else. All the same stuff that I use in football, I'm going to use in, in the rest of my life. No, so, big facts. Um. Yeah, you know, a lot of years went by and um, got got into sales, got into you know med device sales, all this kind of stuff, and realized you know I can. I've always had a dream of being an entrepreneur, starting my own business type stuff. Realized I'm damn good at sales. Why don't I sell my own stuff? Dang it! Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, I'm out here selling other people's stuff. So uh, you know, I got I needed I needed adrenaline, needed a fix. Got heavy into paintball, and what I found was there's just no way to train paintball outside of shooting each other in the face. You know, I wanted to do all this tournament stuff. And <laughs> we're over here, out here. We got, we got to get welted up every time we go. I come home, honey. I, you know, I got like 10 welts in my yeah. neck. You know what I mean? It's like, this just isn't working out. So, you know, I came up with a concept. You know, I designed a, a target to mimic human motion tucking in and out of cover. Now, it's an automated target, remote controlled, toast targets, and it's a target that mimics human motion tucking in and out of cover at full speed. You can get 0.5 seconds of exposure rate um, but it's also changing levels, changing directions. It can go vertical, left, right, however you want to do it. So there's a, a million different ways that you can utilize it. I mean, the sucker's 30 pounds. You can pick it up, put it anywhere uh, for shoot houses, uh, shoot house prep. Um, so we ended up going the route of military law enforcement. I, was um, and, I see and, on, on the website, you got some law enforcement stuff going on up here as well. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Orange County Sheriff, they're in. So that's going to be some big news we're breaking here. We're going to go through Police One to announce it to the all of the United States, man. Essentially, we've created a tool that you know one of their sheriff goes, um, you know, on, a, on our shooting range now, we have qualifications, right? you got to yeah. be able to shoot the gun and be efficient with the gun. But now we're able to put our, our, our uh, deputies through drills to where they can come out here and go through a scenario training that we were never never able to give before. 
because what we have coming out from behind cover is something they see every day. Somebody behind a doorway, door frame, your car, something like right. that, where they don't they, they perceive a threat, but they don't know if they're supposed to, to treat it like a threat right. until the, until it exposes itself. So now you can put these types of targets together on our system, and the dep- or the sheriff goes in our shooting range. You can pass qualifications now without ever having to fire your weapon. Because of the fact that you are just in this scenario and you handle the scenario perfectly because of these new targets, Bro, and that I think is go. a really powerful thing, man. But I think that's a that's a change of of the whole idea of, uh, you know, these officers. We, we need them. We need them to be at their need best. Effects. We need them. We need them to be at their best. You know, and so we need to help them handle their scenarios and these situations the best of their abilities. So their tools to do that have been limiting. You know, they've been really limited as to how they can train that and practice right. that. Safely. Until yeah. those targets. There it is. My man seeing you know a need I mean? and you created it, man. And not just yeah, at the man. end though, man, looking at some of the videos of it, man, and we obviously have some of the videos playing too um in a little bit. But when you're watching, you know, how you're seeing the targets go in and out and stuff like that, man, that is real lifelike, man. So yep. I do like that, man. And I'm sure for the uh police or law enforcement that are gonna be using it, man. Salute to those yeah. dudes and hopefully make it a safer, more efficient place for everybody around, man. Yeah, man. And what we also found was I mean, I approached it with football mindset. Like I'm a professional and I know how to get the best out of my tools. And it, when I was doing paintball, what I needed was an increased reaction time, I needed accuracy, and I needed to see exactly what I was gonna see when somebody's poking their head out. And so when it came down to it, bro, I started shooting lights out. Like I was shooting, tricking. Uh, I ended up getting some MVP trophies, started Let's winning go. tournaments. I'm like, this is it, bro. I'm putting everything we got into this. I'm, I'm calling everybody. I'm going to do this until this thing freaking goes, man. Because I know what we got is life saving, and it's also very threatening for uh, an opposing force to know that somebody else is training on this system. No I respect. You know, we had we had some seals go, bro. They said I would never want my enemy training on this system. And that, I think, is a very powerful statement. Shout out. Shout out. You know what I mean? Because we're, like we're, we're, we're making, a, for soldier-wise, you know, we're making people lethal. Now, I don't know how I feel about making the general population lethal. Very true. Very true. You know? But, uh, hey, if the government says, hey, you can't sell this to the population, but we'll take a thousand of them, sounds good to me. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, absolutely, bro. And look, and that's the day, man. It's like, man, if that's going to make this place safe, man, that's going to protect this country, man. Salute it, bro. I love it. And once thanks, again, thanks, toasttargets.com. Like I said, man, we got check the link. Definitely check it out, man. Definitely check that thing out. All right. Well, the last word that I got for you, man, before we get up out of here, we definitely appreciate you as well. Man, we got to obviously thanks, ask man. about the welcome to the NFL moment. That moment where we've all said, bro, all right. I'm not in college anymore. Mm. I'm not in high school anymore. Mm. I've officially stepped onto that big boy field. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know about you. Mine was not so hot. All right? it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, kind of got worked over. All right? Usually that's mm-hmm. how it goes. But what was your welcome to the NFL my, moment? My welcome to the NFL. I would say, man, I was, I was playing pretty damn well. But there was one time I came off the edge against the Lions. And Stafford was still quarterback at the time. Yeah. And. I came off the edge, you know, coach was like, you better get, you better get a sack, man. You're asking on the line right now. Shout out to PZ. So I'm, bro, I'm out here as fast as I could, bro. You know, like I, I, I turned off all the, all the senses in my body to just freaking go, you know, and I came off that line full speed and this freaking offensive tackle just punched me in the chest, two hands, bro. I hit the ground, was like, oh, <laughs> fucking took my breath away. I stood back up, you know, of course, pissed off, ended up pushing somebody else, but Man, I had never, I never got hit in the chest and like um, put on. You know, I didn't get, I didn't fall my butt. Yeah, I hit yeah, in my chest. Hey, I, respect, I hit the respect, ground though. Respect. Took yeah. my breath away. I n- never, not once in my entire career has anything like that ever happened to me. And that was like, that was a real moment. I was like, damn. All right. Hey, 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 we we here now. These these, yeah, these are the real yeah. ones. We here now. We these are the now. real ones. They, they, exactly. They're on the same level. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> no, let's go, bro. Let's go. I love that right yeah. there, man. But dog, my dog always good always good to tap in with you Thanks, man. Buddy, and i'm man. so happy to hear man that number one that you continue to thrive at life but number two man that you creating something that's dope man so like i said bro Thanks, keep doing bro. what you do man and it's always love over here it. man right on moats deking nice to meet you bro take Hell it yeah. easy man yeah let's you get too, it bro let's right get on guys <laughs> thank you moats all right baby peace all right